Shalom Erev Tov Erev Tov I'm very happy to be here today My wife is me, Daria And uh, we have of uh, enemy We came uh, few soldiers to uh, stay with you a little bit. Uh, just, just yesterday you came in Israel and we celebrate Independence Day. And usually uh, in the Memorial Day, we, uh, our family, uh, we are running uh, all over between the uh, many cemeteries. I lost my brother in uh, 73 war. In Yom Kippur War, his name was Emmanuel, and uh, my wife, uh, she lost two brothers during the war. The youngest is Dylan, and another uh, one, uh, he, uh, he was killed in the uh, Seventh Degree War, and uh, the first one, uh, the oldest one, was independent today, his name is Shimon. Um, I lost many, many of my soldiers. And of course, uh, some of my commanders. And uh, we, uh, we, we understand the day, the Memorial Day, that's come close to Independence Day. And uh, I can tell you that uh, we argue about that sometimes. If we have uh, to make two days together, but uh, we know exactly what happened. What is the price that we had to pay for the? Uh, Achmaud, what we call independence in our country. Now we came here and during the war in Gaza. I just listened to the uh, news now, five people, five soldiers were killed this day. And we are very sad. We grew up in our country. My family, they uh, made the Aliyah in 1925, 99 years ago. And the family of my wife, uh, almost the same. And we grew up in uh, Israel. Uh, in, I grew up close to the uh, Arab neighborhood. I used to go every morning to the kindergarten in the middle of the uh, neighborhood. Out of neighborhood, I was scared to go to the kindergarten. And I grew up with the feeling that one day they would try to kill us. I remember the, uh, the day that uh, uh, Ben Gurion into the, uh, our country. At this moment, they started to shut to our house. We had a house, uh, just a um, small house. That, all, everything it was outside the uh, restroom and the shower room and everything. And my father and his friend started to shoot them back. And they left. And they gave us a sign that one day we will come back and we will cut you through. And uh, I grew up in Israel and uh, I became a soldier after that. And I had a feeling that one day I'm going to protect our country. You know, King Solomon has said, Dor Bolech Bedor Ba, Vehaaret Leolam Omedet. Means he means that we are going to protect the country from generation to generation. My father was a soldier. He fought um, close to Jerusalem. Uh, and I was a soldier. My, uh, we have three children. Two boys, both of them tank commander, one of them is a major. And our daughter, she's seven, Arnold Corps, and our grandson and granddaughter, they just serve the army now. And uh, I became a soldier, and after that I became an uh, officer. The 5th of June, 67 was uh, after Independent Day, the 15th of May, 67. Nazar decided to destroy our country. 
Nasser was the president of Egypt at that time. And we wake up in the morning and we saw many tanks crossing the Suez Canal. And I was company commander. I ran to Beersheba and I took my tanks 14 all the way to Gaza Street. And I stopped near, near Oz, exactly. Talking about 67. We waited for three weeks. We closed all the schools, all the factories, and we were scared that they are going to attack us. We didn't have any border between them and us. And we wait and wait and wait. In the 5th of June, from the world, Sadin Adon, Rachi, we start to move. I was the first Israeli tank crossing the border in 67. Exactly where we are now. Behind me was a big column. I came to uh, Hanunas, that now are fighting there more the division. And I was across the border. I found myself in the main room behind me, all the tanks. And I changed three times tanks because they hit me. And after that, I moved to the Gush Katif, if you remember the name. And I moved back to Rafa. And I found myself the first Israeli tank in Rafa. The main combat was behind Rafa, south of Rafa. We fought against them. The ratio was uh, like uh, five Israeli tanks against uh, almost 50. And then I saw the picture from 67. It's completely different from now. They start to run from us. And they took the shoes off and they run away all the way to the beach. And this is the picture that I remember from 67. This is the picture. Many, many shoes all over the dune. It's a shame. And I have to remind you, this, we didn't have any plane to be in Jerusalem. I sent my wife to her parents to stay in Jerusalem because it's gonna be quiet place in and the first shell was shooting by the little king, remember him, Hussein. He shot Jerusalem, we had to move one brigade, one brigade to Jerusalem, and we start to fight them. Even the Golan Heights, we didn't have any plane to be there. I was there for two months before the war started with my company. And we had to move our forces from Sinai all the way to the Golan Heights because they shot all over the Kula Valley and Jordan Valley after six days to finish the war. The end of the day, in the 5th of June, I found myself the first Israeli tank near El Arish. El Arish is the capital of Sinai. I was very proud to be uh, the first Israeli tank behind me all the seven brigades. And I found myself in the middle of ambush. And they shot my tank. All the tank was in fire. I back went to hospital. I was a year in the hospital. 60% of my body was burned. Third degree. 12 operation until now 17. Two of my crew was killed in the tank. One of them badly wounded. And after a year, I decided to go back to the tank. I wasn't allowed. You know, in Israel, you have a medical profile. You know, what is the highest? 97. And I took the paper, I cleaned it up, and I wrote 97. <laughs> and I moved back to the tank. Yom Kippur War, there is a saying in our country, it said, Vaishman Yeshurun Vaivat. 
is some kind of feeling that we uh, didn't feel that uh, we have a risk around that. And the big mistake that we have done, and we didn't start to the mobilization in our country. But God protect us. Because after four days vacation in the holidays in Rosh Hashanah, is, uh, they moved me to the north and the south. The war started in Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is the best day for mobilization. It took six hours to my brother to be in his tank when he was in the synagogue in the middle of the shul. And my father, he was there. And you know, just in our country, you can see our father go with three sons to fight together. My father. We have many families like that. And my father fought for the country because my brother was born. <coughs> And one of them didn't come back. We won. We stopped 100 kilometers from Damascus, from uh, Cairo, and 25 kilometers from Damascus. But this was terrible. I lost many, many of my soldiers. The main combat in the Golan Heights after we lost the area. Golan Heights is just 12 miles wide. 15 kilometers my way, mile way long. That's it. And the ratio was uh, eight tanks or maybe ten against one Israeli tank. This was the ratio. And we fought against them. And for four days we lost most of the Golan Heights. And um, the main combat when I was a participant in the 77th Battalion was in the north and we fought against them and we stopped them. You know, the 77th Battalion that I was commander during the Yom Kippur War is the battalion that was in the border now. Same battalion. And I'm part of this battalion all the years with the parents with the Lord. In this moment, the 7th of October, my battalion, 77, lost two times soldiers that I lost in the young people. Can you imagine that? An old story that you know about the heroes that you saw maybe in the TV is 77 battalion, 10 battalion. And seven brigade. This is a part of seven brigade. What happened to us in the seventh of October is unbelievable, and I even cannot imagine what happened to us. You know, we have done many, many mistakes, and we know that. We had the feeling that we're strong enough, and we said it's Hamas, and said not going to attack us, of course. We built fence 50 meters deep in the ground, but we forgot what about that. And we found ourselves in the holiday, Simchat Torah, and half of the soldiers was at home, and we had to protect ourselves without soldiers. And we uh, support them to get the money for many countries. And we thought we were naive. The main problem in Israel is that we talk Hebrew and they talk Arabic. Arabic is mentality. And we don't talk Arabic. They have many signs between them. And we said, Maybe they want peace. We pray every day for peace. And sometimes we naive. I grew up with a picture from Holocaust. And I remember that. And we said, all of us, never again. Never again. 
Look what happened to us now. We feel guilty all over the world. Even here in the United States. It gives us the feeling that we, we are guilty that we are there. We build our country, and I believe most of the world know what, which kind of people we have in our country. Many think that we develop, we have maybe the best country in the world, but people in the world jealousy. Maybe because it's a big success, or maybe because we are good. I'm very proud. I go with Star of David. I'm very proud to see my grandchildren go with Star of David. And we know this is our country, and we have to fight for that. I believe they will try again and again and again. We cannot change their mind about us. They hate us. And some of the world hate us. If you realize that your neighbor hate you, you protect yourself well. And we have done many mistakes because we thought they change their mind. No. They will never change. And we have to be ready for that. You know, King Adai, Angel and Gabriel asked the God, how you give to the Jewish nation everything? Milk, honey, holy land. And the God says, wait, wait, wait. You will see which kind of neighbors I'm going to give them. <laughs> and those neighbors, they are going to stay there. And of course, they have a dream. Talk about Palestine. What is the root of the Palestine? It never happened. Palestine is the time of uh, British time. They were, I, I have uh, documents. I was born in Palestine. And uh, of course, we have to look the future now. When I listen to the kids here, and the song, I was very proud, very proud. I'll be more proud if you will be a soldier in Israel. <laughs> I remember your face. <laughs> Someday you will come to our country, your country, your capital, Jerusalem, and you will cut your hair, You'll be a soldier, maybe uh, you get married there. And if you see me in the street, say, Victor, remember me? From New York? And I will remember and I give you a hand. Believe me, I pray most of, the, most of us will be there. Because we have one country. The safety place in the world is Israel. Every Jew, I don't, I know some, they grew up here, don't blame anybody about it, but I know, I know. I watch TV every day. <laughs> I watch TV every day. What happened here in America, great America, is not Europe. Europe invaded already from this land. Ten years from now, all the uh, Europe is in this land. I walk in the street in Paris, and everybody start to talk to me Arabic. Because I look like Arab. <laughs> I'm not Mexican. I'm not, I'm, I'm not from Cuba. I'm Yemeni. And they closed the main road in Paris. And they pray on Friday, close the main road. Chance that is there. This was going to be in Europe. Now I feel it's come close 
to the American, the naive American. <laughs> Do you read what they wrote about us? What they have dreamed? You know that? Don't be naive. Don't be naive. And when I feel that uh, somebody said we are going to stop the ammunition coming to Israel, why? Why? They blame us? They stop us to attack Lebanon now? Make me crazy. I fought in Lebanon. I was division commander. I arrived to Beirut. It's a shame what we, uh, we are suffering. 80,000 people leave the border. All the buildings and the kibbutzim, they left the far away. And the government, we can attack them back. Because somebody said no. And we scared of that. I was minister of public security in our country in September. And I was division, three-time division commander, I know that. This is not the way to survive in the Middle East. If you make the decision here, in Washington maybe, or here in the United States, you don't know what we feel in the Middle East. You don't feel the risk, what we are talking about, about our new generation. But we will find a way to protect ourselves. We are not poor people. It was a moment that we will make our decision and we will fight back an Independence Day. We had 600,000 people, we lost 6,000 people. 1%. And we remember that. And now this is the feeling that we feel in our country. The world against us even we didn't start war. Why? Because of money? Somebody wants to sell my soul? Because of money? There is any solution? without being strong in the Middle East, and we have to be strong. Every Jew in the world should have in the wall around the country a stone. Which kind of stone, I don't know. Even what we are doing here. We're talking about the future of all of us. All of us. We pray three times a day for Jerusalem. They talk about Jerusalem because it's a holy city for them. They didn't even wrote the name Jerusalem and their Quran. They hate us. And they hate the Americans. And they hate their opinion. Whoa, don't be naive. They have a plane. Don't be naive. I'm not talking about you, you are not naive. Now we are here to come with you, to, to stay uh, with you a little bit, and to share the ideas. And you know that better than us. You know that. But it should be influenced in the Jewish community and the, those people in Washington. They are going to throw us away. What's going on? They blame us. They stop us. We didn't ask for any soldiers from the United States to come to support us. No. But we're stupid. We closed the factory, they made ammunition. Because we trust somebody. And many, many things. We cannot develop F-35. But we can develop the Merkava tank. We can teach the new generation how to fight, like you listen to them here. All of us, we are Zionists. All of us, we believe that we have a strong country. We need a strong country. 
because strong country protects all the Jews in the world. It doesn't matter where we live, but we know if Israel is strong enough, somebody will protect us. And what happened now? I'm not going to cry here now. I'm a strong guy. And we have a strong country. And we can beat them. Believe me. We have to be united. We have to realize those people, they are not neighbors. They are enemy. And if we work together, we will win, of course. And I'm very happy to share with you a little bit of our idea, because even you know better than me what we have to do. Thank you very much for all the organization. And I can tell you that we will celebrate how many years now? 76? We will meet each other on 120. <laughs> and after that, look at me. A month from now, I'll be 80 years old. Wow. Look well, huh? <laughs> yeah. Because I'm young enough. <laughs> we are eating so well because that, uh, I'm, uh, I'm strong enough. I'm ready to fight. I have grandchildren and my children all together close to us and we trust each other and we are a big family all together and uh, please be strong here, use the flag. I saw, I drove with Leden tonight, uh, this morning and I saw she came to uh, pick up from the uh, airport, and I saw two flags, two flags on her car, American and Israeli. I look at her, are you crazy? <laughs> she said, no, I'm proud. <laughs> Good Thank you very much.